Good current time of day in your neighborhood, everyone. Thanks for joining me in the shop. I've got our 01 Hyundai Accent in here again. And it came home the other day unable to operate its clutch. And there was virtually no resistance to be felt on the clutch pedal. Yeah, this is a hydraulically operated clutch, so the feel of the pedal can tell you kind of what's going on. And if you watched my clutch replacement video on this car, then you will know that not only did I recently replace the clutch, but also the slave cylinder down here. There it is. This cylinder has a piston inside, pushes this rod out, and operates the clutch lever right here. So firstly, since I recently replaced that, I don't really suspect it, though that's not out of the question. Also, when the slave cylinder fails, it generally leaks externally and would be visible. So the only other component to this is the clutch master cylinder here. It is generally next to the brake master cylinder. It is the same sort of thing, only smaller. <clears throat> and with only a single line going down to that clutch slave cylinder. So, of course, the first thing to check would be the fluid, which is brake fluid. And this looks awfully filthy, like indicating deterioration of the seals inside this master cylinder. And for another indication of what's going on, we'll go operate the clutch pedal, slowly at first, and very little resistance, and you're probably seeing very little movement of the slave cylinder there. But if I pump it so rapidly, Again, indicating that the problem is in the master cylinder. So here is our new clutch master cylinder. And here being the part that we've already been looking at. And it bolts to the firewall through two holes in this flange. And then this would be the part that pins into the clutch pedal. And a jam nut there to hold its position once you have adjusted it. So that you can set this precisely so that when this rod is all the way retracted, that is the same point as the clutch pedal is all the way up. And so this should be relatively simple. All we have to do is loosen these two nuts and remove them from where it's bolted to the firewall. And then this line here, which is exactly like a brake line, so, we'll give them a little penetrant. That's a mess. And wait a few minutes and begin disassembly. And also, in the case of this master cylinder, the reservoir can be rotated and this one is offset where the replacement arrives straight we can just loosen this clamp and rotate it to the same position as this one before all that we want to get the fluid out of this thing so we need to open the bleeder valve on the slave cylinder down here and we'll need to use that to bleed the air out when we put the new one on and add new fluid. That guy right there with the rubber plug. Or cap, rather. 
go again. Getting low. And using the box end of a wrench for the best grip, we'll just crack that open, which isn't too hard since I just replaced this, what was it, nine months ago? And so I have attached the hose of my handy dandy magnetic mounted brake bleeding bottle. Now we can open that and go pump the fluid out. And it's already on its way via gravity. But I think I'll go speed it up. And with that done, I have crawled under the dash to disconnect from the pedal by this pin here, which is held by another pin. Freedom. Now, so far, the components of this car have been quite nicely arranged. But look at what they've done to me here. Unless I have some crazy offset line wrench, I'm going to have to do something else. So, while I would normally take the hydraulic line off first, leaving it securely bolted to the firewall for stability. I think I'm going to have to do it the other way around here and stretch it up just enough to get the line wrench on there. So we'll remove these nuts. And I'm having to use a different approach on the lower nut there. can't even reach that bottom nut with my hands, so I had to loosen it all the way with the extension there. Let's see if I can snag it without dropping it. Ooh. Well, at least it went all the way down. Now with that free to move a little bit, I'll try to get it up here just enough to get the wrench on that line. I don't want to bend this very much. There, rotate counterclockwise. Dealy D. Stay. Yeah. All right. If I hold it like that. Neither of them. Well, that's interesting. They have just not quite left enough room to get this out from behind the brake booster. It's going to need to be persuaded slightly. There we go. 
And now, looks like it's an 11 millimeter or 7 sixteenths. Come on. Okay, just had to get the camera out of the way there and it is loose. I can then finish loosening it with a standard wrench. There's that. And out it comes somehow. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, and it looks just like the one I bought. Now we just need to loosen this clamp on the new one. And now so that I can rotate this reservoir. Rotate this reservoir! What's the deal? Do you want more loosening? Rotate this reservoir! There we go to the same angle as the old one. A little bit more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and be confident in my eyeballing and tighten this down out here where it's easier. Notice I'm using the small ratchet and not really using the handle for correct torque for that sort of thing. And now, fishy fish through the hole. You have to pry the brake booster again. Oh, how totally ridiculous. Weasel that on by there. is all right is roughly in position start with that awkward bottom nut I'll try to get it in place with the extension I used to remove it Stay in there. <laughs> so after failing miserably there, I shall try to outsmart the vehicle. With something mildly sticky. There it goes. And then Topsy. And I'll pull out the shipping plug. Attached the hydraulic line. And you just kind of wiggle it around until it will thread by hand. You want to get it in there a bit by hand before using any tools. Looks like a good start, and in this case it's okay that I bolted it to the firewall before tightening the nut, because an open end wrench is good enough here. 
you're installing the line on the new one it doesn't need to be ridiculously tight I'll put the rubber plug in the old one here and save it at least for a while sometimes you can get rebuild kits for these things for a few bucks and now arming myself with a 12 millimeter wrench I can go back under the dash and hook up the linkage and adjust all right now line up the hole in this with the hole in that the clutch pedal you can see it needs to be extended here but the rod will pivot down clear of the pedal it looks like it's gonna have to loosen almost all the way out here Check that out. Not quite. Yeah, it will be all the way. Okay, there we are. And let's see. This had this plastic washer on here. Right like that. Now, if I may install the pin pin, there we go. And then, tighten the jam nut with that 12 millimeter. And now, you fill up the reservoir with some dot three brake fluid. Being very careful about spilling the brake fluid because it takes paint right off. Then back to the handy dandy bleeder setup. Put the hose on the slave cylinder bleeder valve. Retrieve my bottle from below. And after this first bit, I have the bottle stuck on low down there. See if it'll gravity bleed a bit first. Here comes fluid. Okay, it seems to have stopped gravity bleeding, so we'll move on. Putting this bottle above the bleeder valve. So when I go operate the pedal, it will push fluid out the bleeder valve along with the air that is in there. And if you wait a few seconds, holding the pedal down to the floor, you wait a few seconds, the bubbles will rise and you'll have nothing but a solid column of fluid left here because it's going to draw back into the bleeder valve somewhat when you release the pedal. It takes it mostly from the reservoir but it, it draws back a little bit here so you wait a few seconds with the pedal down for the bubbles to rise out of the way. So we only draw solid fluid back. And of course, making sure not to run your reservoir dry in the process. Or overflow your body.
There was a few pumps of the pedal. Now here comes some fluid. And some bubbles. That one's going on its own again. Add a bit to the reservoir. Okay, I'm going to close the bleeder valve and then go pump the pedal a few times vigorously to help work out air bubbles in the master cell. Pedal's starting to feel about right. Now I'll uh, open the bleeder again. And go give it a few more pumps with the long pause holding it to the floor. After topping off the reservoir again. See any bubbles? I see a few small bubbles still here. But not too many in the line. Looks like we should be in pretty good shape there. So I'm going to close the valve. Go start it up and give it a little test. Let's see here. Pedal feels okay. That's still engaging as soon as I lift up on the pedal at all. Seems like there's still more air in there. Let's give it some more vigorous pumping. See if there are any bubbles rising into the reservoir. I don't really see it. Let's give this another bleed, see what happens. Only a very small bubble so far. Alright, I gave it a few more rounds of the depress and hold cycle, and it feels much better now. Quite firm. And you can really hear it squeaking up front. Let's see how the engagement is. Ah, yes. Much farther from the floor. It shouldn't be too far, because this is a almost new clutch. But yes, plenty of control there. I think we're done, folks. And I tap off the reservoir one last time. And remember to put the cap on. And the little rubber cap on the bleeder valve. And so I'd like to thank everyone once again for spending their time with me. I hope that was helpful to someone. And I have another video involving this car that should be coming up soon that I actually did the job a few months ago now. Where my front wheel bearing went bad. And I just haven't gotten around to editing it yet. So don't forget to indicate whether you liked or disliked this video by clicking the appropriate button. And if you like to be a rounded individual, go check out my channel page where there's all sorts of different stuff going on. And if you like what you see, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.